we are going to talk about app, app analytics, right, with React Native. And the tool that we are going to, to see a bit is Amplitude. I am Alejandro Rizzo. I am a mobile engineer. I am close to reaching that two years being here in, in white -Prem, but I have around uh, four years working with mobile apps. So let's start. The agenda will be, uh, first, we are going to talk about the role of the data analytics a bit uh, in mobile development. Then we are going to see about amplitude analytics. Also, we are going to see that they offer a SDK for React Native and also more for other platforms. Then we are going to see some examples. I am going to show you some other analytics uh, as alternatives and uh, some important facts at the end about the role. Um, impact of the data, data analytics. Uh, the, the success of the user engagement and mobile interaction depends on the app's ability to analyze and show, and show the result as per user requirements. Uh, we know that nowadays, right, uh, the latest technological advances in the previous years uh, has become the mobile phones like something really, really important for, for you, humans, right? Uh, nowadays, we do all of the things uh, from our phone. And so we depend on mobile applications. We use a lot of gadgets to perform multiple tasks, right? But why is important? Because uh, at the end, we want to, to know what the user needs, right? Regarding what we are offering to the users. Easy to understand user needs. By understanding the users, uh, how users from various foundations, lifestyles, and age groups respond and interact with portable mobile applications. Uh, as a business or you, if you have an application, right, you can plan idea for new or, or an old application. Uh, to change capabilities to existing users, right? Or to improve or or new things that maybe you want to add because you notice something that maybe is not going as, as expected, right? So at the end, you will be able to figure out the shortest route towards success uh, in terms of what you want to offer to the users, right? So why is it important to, to businesses? Um, can be you can uh, can also be used to monitor the success right of marketing campaigns uh, nowadays is using all all the platforms and, and social media that we use if you clean click any post you will notice on the URL that there is an ID that 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 ID is referenced to a marketing campaign and that, that things happens under the hood. By tracking metrics such as conversion rates and average time is spent on site, also to know how much time right the user spent on, on our application. And the businesses businesses can understand uh, how effective the marketing efforts are and make changes as needed to improve results, right? So we're going to talk about Amplitude. And it's a tool that we are using on one of our clients on Wipram. It has a really nice feature, for example, they offer us that we can track around uh, uh, 100,000 users per month. So it's a really good uh, number for being a free tier. And one of the key features of Amplitude, it is the um, ability to track user actions and analyze user behavior. And it's one of the most used uh, nowadays because um, it offers a lot of advantage uh, tools for going deeper uh, during your analysis of, of the data, right? So, okay, let, let's see a bit, just to not talk too much. At the beginning, you need to sign up, right? Uh, Amplitude is going to ask you about signing a organization URL, maybe just a, a name. It can be your company or your team's account. And then it asks you for how you are going to send uh, the data. If you are going to use another tools like Sendment with Snowflake, that you will connect directly to the API of those tools, or you can do it directly with Amplitude SDK. That is the case that we are going to, to show you. And you, you need to select the data sources. Uh, how I mentioned, uh, we are talking about uh, React Native, right? They already offer a SDK for React Native. So, it's really straightforward to, to implement. But you can see that they already offers a lot of yeah, SDKs, so 
you should be able to, to implement on any other project. Here at the end, um, you will get an API kit. That is the one that you use for in initialize the uh, service. So let's see the SDK for React Native and his integration. Prerequisite, you have to have access to a React Native project, right? And you already have also an Amplitude account created and the API key already provided by Amplitude. Really straightforward, you need to use any package manager, in this case, Yarn. You need to add the library of analytics and also they require to install another one that they, they, they will use on mobile as in storage, but if you manage all the local storage in the app, also you need to install the pods for the native models on iOS. And then uh, easy, right? You, you just need to initialize uh, the SDK and by using the AP key that you already have, right? From, from Amplitude. And there are another options that you can use too. You can assign a user ID and you can enable and disable other things that they, they offer on, on this documentation. In this case, we are uh, disabling the, the cookies. Also, you can set up the debugging um, by default is in the book. So it will show error measures, warnings, informative message, and may be useful, right? When we are in, in the development process of our, our application, helps a lot to, to see what's going on while you are implementing this tool. And how to track events is really, really easy. Uh, we need to define, right, all the events that we want to track. Depends on the app, depends on the goals, depends on what you want to know about the user, about what the user is doing on your app. So this is an example, right, of uh, tracking a, a button that was clicked. So really easy. You can see we are assigning a title to that uh, event and we can assign also properties to that event. So other things that we can do, we can manage user properties, we can manage user groups, and we can assign a custom user ID for each user. Also, we can assign a custom session ID for each user too. And for each session means that every time the user uh, log in, right? Also, you can assign a custom device ID that is really important because some issues may be related to the device that they are using. So by having the information of that device, uh, it can help you to, to know what's going on and what is what uh, solution we can uh, for, for that case, right? And also reset when user logouts. So let's see some examples. And uh, this is a, a real data of, of, of a project that I'm working on. I, um, I'm not showing the name of, of the client, right? And in this case, it's in development. Uh, all the events are triggering in dev and we are seeing the section that they offer that calls user lookup. Basically, in this part, we are seeing all the events that are, that are happening in the, in the app. And you can see that we are able to see the user ID and the time of that event, right? From which platform, from which country. And the, uh, the name of the event, uh, some are already declared for um, by default for the platform, and uh, other ones are declared custom by us, right? And what else? Uh, we can enter uh, inside e each user ID, and we can see more information. Right now, we are seeing the user properties uh, data. Amplitude already recorded most of them. You can assign custom. Uh, properties. For example, you can see that we are setting some custom uh, properties like the app version, the build number, and to know if, if that user is logging in or not, right? So to help you to see if a user that, okay, is logged in, it means that uh, you know how the app should behave. So it helps to, to, to catch um, maybe where behavior. So or where issues or, or yeah, steps that maybe the user should not be doing, right? What else? Uh, you can also see all the event stream of that user. This is really, really helpful because um, you can see how behave all the events and also how behave the, use, the user inside the app, right? So you can see 
which screens the user uh, view or which uh, buttons the user click, if the sequence of the events are correctly or not. And why this is important because um, we have some charts and this part we can play with all the events that we already have and all the data there that we already recorded. How it helps, um, you can see that we have like a sequence, right? We have a time of when those events were triggered. Helps in this part when we want to analyze that, that information. So I have a small example in, for this application. And most of the application nowadays has a, an onboarding, right? So in this case, it's an application that has uh, six steps of onboarding. You can see that uh, we name, we, we, we assign a, a specific name for, for each step, right? We have an in, important stop screen, in a share screen, notification screen, reminder screen, and an onboarding complete event when the user already, yeah, already saw all the onboarding, right? And did all the, the actions required to, to complete that. So what we were seeing that there were 101 uh, users that started onboarding, but you are seeing that at the end, just 63 users completed onboarding, right? So here is to come the part when the businesses need to check the information and see if this uh, average is um, as expected or not. If we want to, for example, um, apply some enhancements in these steps, why we are losing 20, around 20 users in these steps? Why the users uh, are dropping off in these steps, right? And so we can go to the screen and see maybe something is not working as expected, or maybe the buttons are, are not uh, visible for the user. There are things that, that you need to, to do in that case if we want to improve, right, instead. So that's why uh, it's important this part, because you can see that all the events are being triggered, the sequence that you want, right, because it helps to, to define here. You, you can manage this uh, as you want also. This is another case. You can do comparison, right? In, in that uh, same sequence. So we have the same sequence, but not we are seeing those users that decline the permission for notifications and the ones that accepted that permission, right? So we can see that, for example, seven, around the 8%, right, of, of users are declining the permissions. Is expected or not, we want that or not. Uh, is good or not for us, I, I don't know. It's something that the business needs to, to check and, de and decide, right? And we are seeing that 60% that right, of users are accepting the permissions. So the business will need to, to decide, right? Will we, will we want to, to do any other strategy or to, to take this 8% of users to accept the permission because our application depends on notifications because it's important to the user to let him know things, I, I don't know. So that's why analytics um, is really important. This is a basic uh, case. You can imagine other cases, right, for new features, uh, for purchases inside the app and other things. This is another example. We have a segmentation of page views and this can help you to to, to see if there are some parts of the application that maybe are not visited. So for example, we added a new feature that allows the user to, to create a, a something on his, on his profile, but the user uh, has not way to, to know that that uh, feature is there. So it's another way to, to know if the users are reaching right uh, those part of the application. In this case, for example, we are comparing the current data of the current month from the previous month. So we have in this part um, the amount of events for this month and the previous month. So we can see that at least we have like an increase, increase uh, amount of, of events for the current month. Another one that we have, re retention. In this case, how long those it take to return users to come back, right? Uh, you, you will notice that it's like a, not a, a good a chart 
what means because we are in develop uh, development uh, so we are still doing tests and in the last month we are we have been creating new users a lot of new users so that's why you are seeing this this graph but it's important to know that it is working and if this data was uh, real the businesses will need to to decide right why our users are not returning to our app so we need to do something to to improve this retention right so those are like a basic uh, things that we can do with with amplitude and they they offer a lot of advanced tools for example there are like user journeys that you can know which path the user uh, takes for getting to a a I, I don't know to a goal of the application. For example, we can see the different paths that the user take to to the onboarding complete. For uh, just to mention the examples that we talked before. So other alternatives that we have, Apple already offer like a, some capabilities about uh, analytics. It's already included in the Apple Developer Program membership. Basically, for all, all those applications that we need to, to publish on the store, so we are able to use this. But they only offer uh, really basic information. You can see here app store views, app, uh, maybe active devices, uh, sessions. But it's recommended, right, if we want to know more about our user and, and our application, uh, to add an advanced uh, or any other one, right, that, that are in the in the market. Also, Firebase, another one, same as Apple, they only offer uh, basic um, metrics. Um, if you want to go deeper, you need to use big data. Uh, that makes it a little bit not too easy to, to see the results that you want to, to see, right? To, to analyze uh, the, the information, you need to, to have some expertise using big data. So it's something that Amplitude has an uh, advantage, right? That is a tool created for analytics. So it makes it easier that way that you can visualize the information. And there are other tools that uh, I know that are more used on web, but uh, nowadays they are alternative for, for mobile that um, they are based on heat maps. Basically the heat maps reveal uh, by recording the screen uh, how the user behaves. So it makes it really easier to, to see what the user is doing, right? So for example, you can see in this case that the user tapped in this input, right? Several times. Also the user tapped several times in, on these buttons. So by this way, you can see when the user tried to scroll or when the user didn't scroll and and can can scroll in the screen, or a lot of things, right? That you can see in, in real in real time by a, a video that, that was recorded. The only the not advantage of, about heat maps is that um, most of the services are a bit expensive, but it depends, right? If you think that it will help you a lot, something that maybe can be useful to, to implement. An important facts uh, about uh, about amplitude how I mentioned right the limit uh, for the free tier is that you can track a uh, MTUR uh, monthly track user you can track uh, a lot of users uh, every month you can see this is the usage that we did for for the last month and um, so at the beginning of, of a project it can be useful if you see that your users are increasing, so you can decide, right, if you keep using the same service or you will change to another one because also Amplitude allows you to export that information and maybe you can import it to another one or uh, try to upgrade and the plan on being on Amplitude. Also, another limitation is that you can only, you can only create uh, 10 charts. So that is a really limitation. So because if you want to see or if you want to have a lot of um, analysis or different type of analysis, this will not work at the beginning for you. And only offer starter templates, basically the ones that I show you. There are a lot of advanced uh, charts that I didn't uh, work on, but they offer that for for um, for accounts that. Uh, 
face to face, right? It's not efficient. It is expensive. Uh, it depends on the business, right? It depends on the amount of users. Um, so you can see in this case, uh, $49 per month for 1,000 of users, right? It will increase if you increase the amount of users per month. So at the end, it could be a bit expensive, but it depends to the, to the client. If the client can pay or not. That and if it worked for, 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 for that client to implement. That's it, and thanks for all for attending.